Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. The Nigerian Senate plans to summon key entities, including the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Nigerian Ports Authority, MPA, Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, NNPCL, Dangote Group, and Minister of State for Petroleum, Heineken Lukobiri, to address alleged economic sabotage in the petroleum sector. A 14-member Senate ad hoc committee formed on July 23 will investigate the expenditure on turnaround maintenance of state-owned refineries over the past decade and will hold a public hearing on September 10. The committee aims to uncover issues in the petroleum sector and is prepared to issue arrest warrants for heads of agencies who fail to attend their hearings. The summons follows a clash between Dagonte Refinery and regulatory authorities over allegations of substandard products, which the NMPCL has denied, and has led to calls for the suspension of the NMDPR Chief Executive Farouk Ahmed. The controversy has sparked support from various Nigerian businessmen and politicians advocating for support for local entrepreneurs. Now joining us to discuss this is Nick Aguli. He's a public affairs analyst. Good morning, Nick. Thank you for joining us. And good morning to our viewers. And uh, it's uh, 1.37 a.m. here in uh, Calgary in Canada as Aww. I speak to you. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. All right, so we're talking about the issues um, between Dangote and the federal government or the oil sector in general. In fact, it, the, there's been speculations that he's been rolling out um, substandard products, but of course, um, it's, it has been denied, saying, no, we did not say that. That's what the NNPCL has been saying now. But I want to get your take on all of this, especially coming from an overview of the business environment. What's your comment on the fact that Dangote is facing this alleged sabotage in the same country where he's from? So he's a local investor who's putting his money here, trying to help grow our economy in the best way that he can. But there just seem to be some cabals or people who are trying to frustrate his efforts. So I want to get your take on this. It is very unfortunate absolutely unfortunate uh, what is happening between Dangote refinery and the Nigerian midstream and downstream petroleum Re regulatory authority on the one hand mm. is shameful it actually damages any gains that Mr. President could have made traveling around the world shopping for foreign direct investment into Nigeria. The world is watching what is happening to an investor who has put in about $20 billion in a refinery in Nigeria. And the statement that was issued, it wasn't even a statement, it was a video of somebody who is supposed to be a regulator, somebody who is supposed to protect the industry, regulate the industry, ensure that the industry is performing. And what, what we mean by that is the downstream petroleum sector in Nigeria coming out to speak. The way he spoke, I'm not a, a psychologist. Perhaps psychologists could do a, 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 a better professional analysis of, of how he spoke, but from my own personal perspective, he spoke like someone who is in pains, someone who is unhappy that a refinery is not coming to produce petroleum products locally. He spoke like somebody who wants a continuation of importation, somebody who uh, you cannot expect a regulator. Look, to, to underscore what I'm saying, imagine that the central bank, the central bank is the regulator of the banking industry. So the central bank governor comes on air in public on national television to say that Bank A is actually doing wrong things, they are, their accounts are fake, uh, they, they don't meet up standards, Bank A 
he is looking to be a monopoly bank a we're not going to agree to that bank a wants to what does that mean it means the central bank want the bank to go down hmm. otherwise matters between regulators and the operators within that system are handled in official circles that regulators are communicating with operators is a normal course of business as we speak today, the NCC, which is the Nigerian Communication Commission, as a regulator of the telecoms uh, sector, is communicating with MTA, Airtel, Glow, and uh, Nine Mobile. The same thing with uh, Nigerian Upstream Petroleum uh, uh, Regulatory uh, uh, Commission is communicating with the oil operators in Nigeria. Central bank is communicating with banks, but none of these regulators come out to the public to demarcate mm. one of the operators in their sector. Mm. So for me, for me, Farouk Ahmed, the leader, the head of Nigerian midstream and downstream petroleum regulatory authority, that he is still in his job today. I think President Tinubu is here to take the decisive action that he needs to take. Mm. Well, it's been said that, um, you know, he should be sanctioned for making such a careless statement. But before we even circle back to Dangote, of course, there's been a need for our own refineries to start working. And there's been a lot of money that have been invested into these refineries. Um, all of our refineries, none is functioning at the moment. They had said the Port Harcourt refinery was going to um, start sometime in June, but that did not happen. It's been moved to August. Um, Kajina refinery has been said to at least be open by December. But these are things that they keep saying or making promises that we never see come to fruition. We have about four refineries in Nigeria that are currently not working. We have the Worry refinery, Port Harcourt, um, Kajuna. I think two in Port Harcourt. How, what, is the, what is the reason why we cannot even refine our own product? Because obviously Dangote is a privately owned company. For a nation that is blessed with so much resources, why are we putting billions of, of money, of dollars, of Naira, whatever the, the currency is, into things that are not working? I'm sure, of course, it, it talks about corruption, but I want to get your take on this sector as a whole. Why is so much money going into the sector? The NNPCL has been accused of being fraudulent, and we don't even know how much they make. We don't know how many barrels we really, really make in a day. There is just so much that is going on in the sector that is so corrupt that we cannot even ascertain anything. But I want to ask, how can we be more, um, how can they be more accountable and transparent to the Nigerian people and ensure that even the monies that we make or the monies that we have is being put to good use, especially with our refineries, when we know that this is a product, this is a commodity that we need so badly? As I is straightforward. The government is trying to do business. Mm. And the government is not a good businessman. I can cite examples for you. You are talking about the four government-owned refineries which are being managed by the NNPC, a government company mm. that is not doing well. It's not only that. As of today, Nigeria is generating and supplying 3,000 megawatts of electricity to 200 million people. Perhaps Plus TV is on a generator now, or some sort of solar solution. Mm. What is the reason? Government is managing transmission company of Nigeria, and government people that bought the, the distribution companies are trying to manage business. Today, as we speak, uh, we have only one train that departs Abuja to Kaduna. So think about Nigeria, 36 states of the Federation. There's only one state capital, Kaduna, that is connected to the federal capital by railway. What is the reason? Government is sitting on Nigerian Railway Corporation. This is what used to happen in telecoms. When government was sitting on telecoms through NITA, the same agony that you described now, Nigerians 
were being promised telephones every day. NITE officials will address press conferences promising that telephones will come. The ministers for telecommunications will be addressing press conferences talking about telephones. But Nigeria was pinned down to 500,000 uh, telephone lines, active lines. The entirety of the country, 500,000 active lines. When Nigeria took the decision that we are going to take telephones away from government management and hand it over to the MTNs and co, who are the real businesses to run telephones, they put in their money, over a hundred billion dollars and counting, and they increased the telephone lines in Nigeria from the miserly 500,000 lines to over 200 million lines today. There are over 200 million active telephone lines today. Think about the growth from half a million to 200 million. It is the same thing that is going to happen to the downstream petroleum sector that we are discussing today. If President Tinubu takes that decisive action to take away these four refineries from the NMPC and hand them over to operators, global operators in the downstream whose business is to run refineries. They will refurbish these refineries, they will get these refineries producing uh, petroleum products, and I tell you that we will buy a liter of petrol for not more than 200 naira in Nigeria. Hmm. So talking about the, the economic sabotage, right, um, uh, there's been reports that there are just some people who are trying to sabotage this to ensure that Dangote is not making a lot of money or is not even um, having a good business, especially with the fact that our other refineries are not working. And like you've said, if we could refine our own products, we would obviously be able to buy petrol for like that amount, less than 200 um, naira per liter. But we, we're talking about the fact that there's this economic sabotage and the Senate is trying as much as possible to ensure that they douse the tension by inviting Dangote, by inviting um, you know, the NNPCL and other key players. How do you think this investigation or whatever they want to do will be impactful for Dangote refinery while still ensuring that our own refineries are also working? If the uh, I don't know what's his name, whether it's a, 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 a director general or executive secretary of the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority, Ahmed Farouk. Mm. If he's accused of economic sabotage, the accusation will carry weight. It will have value for someone holding such a position of authority coming out to make statements that the market a 650,000 barrel refinery that has been uh, built and, and been operated in Nigeria under his purview shows that he was not speaking from good faith. Let's not forget, there are reports that Dangote refinery is already exporting products to other countries. Yeah. And, there are, and these countries will definitely have to test the products before they will import them. If Nigeria is a country where we import all sorts of junk and they are not tested, that is not the case with other countries. And yet, they found Dangote refineries products good enough for them to buy. So the, the, this Ahmed Faru, the head of the Nigeria Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority has actually accused himself as a regulator. If he says that Dangote's products don't meet specification, why has he approved them to be sold in Nigeria? If he says that Dangote is looking for to be a monopoly, what does he mean? Uh, uh, Dangote built a refinery. He didn't stop any other um, investors from building refineries. Yeah. But then he made a point. He made a point. The point he made was that he said Dangote approached them to say that they should not issue import licenses again 
for the importation of petroleum products. And on that basis, he accused Dangote Refinery for wanting to be a monopoly. There is something there that Nigerians need to watch very carefully. What this man, Ahmed Farouk, has said, currently, as we speak, they are issuing licenses for the importation of petroleum products. But they are issuing those licenses with subsidies. Whether they want to accept it or not, yeah. we know that if there were no subsidies, petrol would be selling at far more than what it is selling today. Yeah. So what is Ahmed Farouk telling Nigerians? He needs to come out very clearly and speak to us. These licenses that he's insisting that they will continue to issue, will there be licenses that will be issued together with subsidy or they will be issued without subsidy? If the licenses will be issued without subsidy, that is fine. Let them issue them so that whoever brings petrol in Nigeria, you land it at whatever cost you land it, you compete with Dangote's products that are being import uh, that, that are being produced locally. That is competition. So that will even put Dangote on his toes to mm. ensure that his pricing will be okay, his quality will be okay, because yeah. he's competing with products coming from somewhere else. That is not a problem. But right. if this man, Ahmed Farouk, is talking about in issuing licenses to importers, and when they come, there will be subsidy on it, then he's an economic saboteur. So how right. do we, so because in one minute, in one minute, right, how do we um, mitigate this economic sabotage? Because this is such a vital sector. So how do we mitigate it, especially when we know that there's a public perception? Um, if we're saying we want to have foreign investors coming in, of course, we need to be able to fan the flames of our local investors. So how do we mitigate this economic sabotage moving forward as we wrap it up in a minute? Just called uh, Amir Farouk an economic saboteur and i want to explain why i say so he will be an economic saboteur if he is issuing licenses with subsidy to import petroleum products to compete with dangote refinery because it means he's making the imports cheaper mm. and putting dangote in a bad place which turns economics on his head because normally countries levy import duty on imports to make them more expensive so that those who are producing locally will have a, a headroom, a head start in the market. And why right. countries do that is because the, the person producing locally is not only just selling, he is recruiting the people in that country, he's paying taxes in that country, he's helping the economy of that country. So it is the country's duty to protect them. That's why we have import duty on imports. So if Ahmed Farouk is now subsidizing imports, to make them cheaper against Dangote refinery, he is an economic saboteur. And the mitigation is that Mr. President needs to remove him. All because right. there is no country that has ever done that in the world before, where you make imports cheaper mm. to compete against your products that are being produced locally. It has never happened before. Mm. He should be removed. That would be the only mitigation. So oh. I want you know what he's doing. All right. Thank you so much, Nick. Um, it's always a pleasure having a conversation with you. So thank you for coming and shedding, sharing your valuable contributions on this. Thank you. Thank you very much and good morning to Nigeria. Good morning. All right. So we're speaking with Nick Aguile. He's a public affairs analyst. And we've just been discussing the fact that the Senate has summoned the NNPCL, Dangote and others over alleged sabotage well alleged economic sabotage this is where we have to wrap it up on the show today thank you so much for having the breakfast with me i'll see you again on monday wishing you an amazing weekend my name is Rumer paulson once again have an amazing day